it's been a lot, many years of, uh, of, of trying this and trying that and, and seeing what other people are doing and, and stuff and, and even still I'm always trying something new so, um, you know, it might feel rough the first couple times but you'll get the hang of it and, and uh, you'll get better every time you do it and, you know, if they'll give you more budget you can find some other people that do it and, right. you know, or, or maybe you get a student that's just really really interested and give them a little a little room to explore. To, to explore and grow and, uh, see i've been told they're not allowed to touch anything that's probably not a bad idea on the middle school level okay. it's, it's usually high schools where they really start doing that or, or where they start doing it and, and really start showing the interest honestly um so it's probably not a bad a bad rule to have but it's not to say that there might not be some kid that you, you make an exception right. for it. <laughs> well, I'm going to have to do, days, read yeah. up and do plenty of studying, too. Um, okay, so you said make sure that I have the front lighting and the top lighting. Mm -hmm. You said side lighting and foot lightings are an option, but sure. maybe, maybe not. Is there anything else that I need? You were talking about the different areas of the stage, creating those different areas. Mm -hmm. What but, do I need to know about that? So, like, a single light's only going to be able to cover a certain right. section of the stage. Um, so you're gonna, you know, you're gonna need multiple lights to cover the entire stage. Um, you know, again, you can record those multiple lights into a fader to bring up a bunch at a time. But if it's a very isolated scene and they're only playing downstage right, there's no need to have light upstage left. Right. Um, so you would then, you know, maybe switch back to channel mode and just bring up you know, that specific area that they're acting in um, to draw focus um, and just, um, we, we as humans have a tendency to, um, to look at the brightest thing um, in a room. So like if you, if you walked into a dark room and there was a single light on, your eye is immediately drawn to that light. It's not going to go searching for what else is in the room. You might do that after, Later. but... Um, you know, if you're having a scene down right and maybe you're trying to sneak on some furniture for the next scene somewhere else, you really want to focus your lights um, and focus it with the cueing, like only have, um, you know, 22 through 24 on mm -hmm. because they're down here, you know, and then when it's time to see this over here, We'll take that out and we'll bring this up in a queue that'll crossfade from one to the next, and you know, and then and then they can exit on off in the dark, and the audience's eye is drawn to where this light's coming up over here, and we don't see them walk off stage or you know, that's one one example. But you know. and you so can you cross cross queue when? When you're using here? Yeah, absolutely. So, like, using using recorded okay. cues here, um, you know, Q1 has whatever lights at whatever levels, and Q1.1 has different lights at what at different levels. And so, when you know, when you go into Q1, it's got all those things up. Some are at 64, some are at zero, some are at full. Well, when we go into one, this one's staying on at full, but all these are going down, looks like to zero, except for that's at 55 and that's at 84. And you can see that it's kind of isolated down the left there. So while we did have a big, bright, full stage look, over five seconds, some things came up and some things came down, and now we're just down left. Okay. And then you press go again to 1.2. Looks like it opens it up to center a little bit more, or, or maybe moves from left to center. Um, and then five. Looks like it grows a little bit, but builds it out some. Um, we've got one on, so we added that downstage left back in um, as well. So. Um, yeah, and that's what the cues are doing is allowing you to, you know, instead of having to have a million fingers and manually mm -hmm. manipulate everything from one to the next, you can just press go and go from that cue re you recorded to the next cue that you recorded. 
okay. or the blackout you recorded okay. or, or whatever else. And when you know when you have when you label everything, then um, you know then you know what's coming up and and where you are. And if you know and if something's wrong, you can always just edit it. Um, like let's say we're in this queue, but oh, I meant to have channel eight up as well. I can say eight at fifty enter, and then I'm just going to record. Enter. It says confirm you're wanting to re-record Q5. I say yes. Um, now because of and, and when I move on to the next one, it'll release Q8. It'll release channel eight um, because it wasn't recorded in Q7, um, which okay. is the next Q there. If I accidentally pressed go when I wasn't supposed to. Um, can always hit the stop back button that'll stop the, the that'll stop the queue from going on any further and I can either press it again to go back or wait till I was supposed to go and then continue on going with the queue probably a little bit too much but you can also grab these faders um, these are your cross faders and and manually switch from one cue to the next if you if you've hit go and you're like oh crap and you, you know I need to stop that because that wasn't right now I want to sneak this in so I'm gonna go back to the queue and manually move it forward and now okay. we're in seven okay all right, can I, um, is there a way to save the show? How do I, how do I save it? How do I go back to it okay. when I, when I boot up every time? How do I go back to um, if, if you turn it off and turn it back on, in theory, nine times out of ten, probably even more, it will just come back up to where you left off. Um, assuming no student or somebody else came in here and messed with it. Um, to back that up, you hit your browser here, um, which th this might be up anyway, but brow the brow if it's not, you can use the browser button um, to pull that up. And you use your mouse, come over here to file and save. Since we haven't saved this, it's going to ask us for a name of mm -hmm. the file. Back up and I'm gonna do whatever. I'm gonna escape out of this for now. Um, another thing I'll I'll often do too, if I like, if I've just done a show and now I'm doing another show, instead of starting from scratch, I'll just save as and then start deleting cues and changing the patch okay. around and stuff. That way I don't have to completely yeah start over. You know, maybe I've built some effects that I might want to use the next time, and if I started over, then I'd lose those effects. So I'll usually save as um, your show. Here's your show file archive. Where some people have recorded some things in the past. You can start a new folder and record your show. Um, you can also either on the back or right here above the blackout. This little guy comes out. Um, it's just a USB cover. You can pop in a USB drive okay. and and save it to the USB. That way, it's on the hard drive here, and you've got a backup okay. on a separate file. You know, should somebody spill a drink on this or something, and the okay. whole thing fries out, and you have to borrow somebody else's console, now you pop your USB in, and you've got You're your right show back up. Okay. Yeah. Um, so that there's just here in the browser sec and when, once you have that in you'll see under save as there'll be like an e colon like you would see on your computer um, that you know and if you've given your thumb drive a name it might even say that on there um, and you can select where you want to file file that away um, and then when you're done um, you'll want to just power off console check the time. Let me do one thing for you here. It's 4.08. It'll be 4.09 by the time we get here. If you do exit, 
it closes out of the the system but it keeps um, or it closes out of the control but it keeps the system on and you've got these options over here one of which is settings it is now four oh nine today is November 22nd not 23rd we are central Central Time, U.S. and Canada. Um, accept those changes, please. And now we're going to start element, and that goes back into the control software. Again, on your initial startup, it's it's set up to automatically go straight into this. You're not going to go to the what's called the shell and then have to click to go on this, which is great because um, you won't use that shell very much anymore. But it didn't accept for some reason. Try that again because that's such a helpful thing to have the right time going. It's the 22nd, not the 21st. It's so weird that it didn't. the right time good deal um, and that was all in settings mm -hmm. yeah okay. if, you, if you just exit rather than power off console and if you needed to do something in in the shell and then power off you could just click shut down it was a long time before I realized there was a button that just went straight to power okay. off. I would always exit and then do shut down. Okay. And then uh, I realized, I don't know, maybe a year ago, well, far too long <laughs> um, in my process that I could just power off console from browser as well. Um, don't need to mess with any of that. Print gives you options to select things that you want to save as a PDF and print off somewhere. I'm going to be doing good if I can that. just get some lights on the stage. Yep. Same thing there. You don't need to worry about any of that. This file is where you save or open a new show if you got it saved somewhere else. Um, like let's say you had a console failure, you borrowed a console mm -hmm. from somebody else and you had it saved on your thumb drive, you just Pop that thumb drive in, go to open, find your file, open it up, and you'll be ready to go. Okay. All right, so can we delete these cues? Mm -hmm. And if we delete these cues, what does that mean the next time I turn it on? Does it just turn on everything? Uh, no, it, it won't turn on anything until you tell it to turn on something. Okay. Um, Cues are deleted there. Stick that down. You can do that down or up to. Okay. You don't really need the extra space since your 96 all fit okay. there, but um, it was still kind of holding on to some of that stuff from the cue that I deleted. So I'm going to go to cue out. Um, what we could do is so 1 through 96. Oh. And when somebody wants the lights on, that's probably what they're there. going to want. Yeah. Um, so now you, you've got one submaster that brings everything up right now. Okay. And then, you know, when you're getting ready to program your show, you can separate them out and mix them however you want for your different cues um, and so forth. Else. Is there a way for me to get in touch with you when I have sure. that question that I know I'll have? I'll give you my phone number. You can text okay. or call. Um, if, I'm, if I'm busy, I won't necessarily answer a that, that call, is but, done. but I might have a you know quick chance to answer a text. <laughs> okay. um, but it's 205 585 1177. And don't worry, 
it will never be something that has to be answered immediately. That's fine. Unless 